you as a manager might be tasked with how to implement a balanced scorecard in your organization. And what this course is going to do is equip you to think through the steps that you would need to take if this is the situation you find yourself in. Some organizations are already implementing an, a balanced scorecard and so this uh, lecture right now might be relevant to you and it might refresh your experience. So we're going to follow a series of steps um, that we, f we generally find uh, occur when implementing a balanced scorecard. The first one is how to reach an agreement about the terms and their meanings. When we think about uh, terms such as the key performance indicators, the objectives, the perspectives, it's important for everyone in the room to understand what those terms mean. Not only is it important for them to understand what those terms mean, but to think about step two and to figure out what the results of those perspectives would be. For example, a key performance indicator could be to increase the number of customers over a set period of time. Now, it's helpful for everyone in the room to understand whether that is increasing the market share of customers or whether that's increasing the customer base or whether that's just increasing the customer number. In other words, do you want one customer to keep coming back or do you want to increase the number of customers who, pur who purchase the product once? Those small nuances are important for you to clarify in step two. In step three, we organize proper discussion around the strategy. We outline the strategy map, the links between the mission, the internal processes, the customer focus, the learning and knowledge, and the finances. We look through uh, the links between those. That strategy map is then put into a balanced scorecard tool. The balanced scorecard then has its objectives and its measures. And finally, that's put in to an action plan. The next step, step four, is add KPIs to the action plan. And the key performance indicators, what we spoke about up here, are now put into actual targets in terms of time and in terms of resources. And then finally, you as a manager would need to work with your employees to get them used to this new way of doing things. In the next lecture, I hope to dive into more how to manage and think through some of these key balanced scorecard pieces. As a manager, your ability to walk employees through these processes and include them in these processes are vital to the success of the implementation of the balanced scorecard tool. I want to take this opportunity to then extend into the strategy map, the balanced scorecard, and the action plan. The strategy map has a series of perspectives and it demonstrates the links between these perspectives. Let me give you an example. But beforehand, let me just firstly show you how the customer perspective, the internal processes, and the learning and knowledge apply to the strategy map. If we were to increase productivity and grow our revenue, we would need to ensure that our customers are satisfied and that we're producing our products and in other words improve our productivity to pre at a lower cost. At the same time we would need to ensure that there are systems in place that can achieve these efficient internal processes. We would need to think about innovation and we would need to think about the way in which we operate. Now the way we operate needs to be underpinned by a staff or employees that are incredibly proficient and knowledgeable at the work that they do in order for them to successfully implement these internal processes, for those internal processes to result in lower costs, improved productivity and ultimate revenue growth. Now each of these perspectives are then mapped into objectives and you will notice that these objectives flesh out both productivity and revenue. Those objectives are further mapped into the balanced scorecard. The balanced scorecard, remember, is the tool that helps you think through the relationships between these and, and the different measures that you have, the targets. This, this is where you would put in your actual targets. So if your cost efficiency ratio is $10 for every one unit, 
your cost efficiency units uh, as a result of this process could be 50 cents for every unit. In other words, you're producing 20 units as opposed to 10 for a lower cost. So, or you could produce 10 units for the lower cost, all right? Now, that balance scorecard is then mapped into an action plan, and that you as a manager will then take these targets and map them onto the monthly, weekly, daily, and quarterly goals, right? And then think about the impact of the budget on your action plan and your balance scorecard. And what this helps you do is, the way I think about this is, the balance scorecard helps me understand whether I'm reaching my strategic objectives. The action plan helps me ensure that I'm implementing the balance scorecard appropriately. And so that's the relationship between these three, these three um, main processes. And they relate very closely to the five steps we take when implementing a balance scorecard.